Court would like to welcome everyone to the December 17, 2020, regular scheduled board meeting. Uh, would you pray? Dear Grace Heavenly Father, so thank you for this day that you've made, and thank you for all the blessings you've put down upon each and every one of us. And Lord, we pray that you'll continue to bless our county. Lord, we pray that you'll uh, touch all those that are affected by this COVID-19. We pray that you'll heal them. And Lord, we pray that you'll guide and direct us tonight. Let us be good stewards over all that we're in charge of and so that we may have our students to be successful in life. And we give you praise for all you do in Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Ohio County Schools provide students with the skills, knowledge, and support to achieve excellence and become lifelong learners. All right, you have your agenda in front of you. If there's anything you want to add or pull off to discuss that's on here uh, on the consent, or if not, I need a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carried. Up next, you know, it says recognitions, and I apologize. I don't. I didn't have Robin necessarily put uh, anything there. But as you're well aware, this being our December meeting, if uh, someone is rotating off the board or whatever the case may be, it's the time that they would do so. This would be the last time that they would be with us. So we do have uh, that actually occurring times two tonight. We have two gentlemen that have been on the board for many years. Uh, Will Eddins has been on the board uh, for, I think, ten years. Uh, pretty close to that, give or take a month or two, but right at ten years total. And then, of course, Mr. Dwight Raymond has been on the board for twelve years. And we certainly want to thank them for their service. We thank them for their dedication to Ohio County and, more importantly, to the students of Ohio County. Uh, and I certainly want to thank them personally for being a part of this board that gave me the opportunity a couple of years ago to take over when Mr. Lewis uh, decided to step down and I appreciate them tremendously for having that, uh, that faith and that confidence. I uh, appreciate y'all so very much. Do we have something that we would like to uh, present to you this evening as a token of our appreciation? Oh, good. Oh, wow. These are locally made. Uh, gentleman here in the county makes these, and then on the back you'll see that it does have uh, it says thank you for your service, Ohio County Schools. But I'd like to present thank one you. of those to each of you, and again we thank you very much. And I know y'all don't really want pictures. Would y'all pose for a picture or no? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, guys. <laughs> you care to give it? I don't mind. I can. I, right. I just would like to get a picture and. Uh, Put something on Facebook later if you gentlemen wouldn't mind. Just thanking y'all for your service and support. You might get one of the. Yeah, y'all want to hold your. Uh, just, just so we can see the yeah, just, just for What is You want that? Don't do not. One, two, three. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. But thank you all very much. Again, we appreciate everything you've done during your time on the board. Uh, you've been very supportive, and we appreciate that. I know I do, and I know our students and community appreciates your support. Um, so thank you again. Appreciate thank it. You. We have any requests to speak? No. All right. Board members have anything? I just like to say that I enjoyed working with all of y'all, and I think I went through some bad times on this board, and I went through some last few years great times, and I really appreciate everything y'all done with me and everything we've done with the school. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yeah. Appreciate you. I enjoyed my time on the board too, especially this last six years. My first term was pretty rough. I think my second meeting. Elementary school in my district, so uh, I don't want to apply for this position to be appointed to it this last time. The guy's like, You went to the school closing? You want to be back on the board? <laughs> so, well, it didn't close, but you know, it was rough. So I appreciate all of y'all. 
I appreciate you two serving. I've learned a lot from Dwight. He's he's pretty knowledgeable in things. And Will, you've been a pleasure to serve with, and I appreciate you all. I appreciate both of you a whole lot. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Minute. We've had a good board. Yes, we have. We've had a good board. Now we know why Karen has so many questions. She learned from the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly oh, right. Wow, wow. <laughs> oh, my. Our trainings will be a little different without you. That's true. You will be that. <laughs> yeah, I will. It'll be very different for me. It seems like uh, you all have been around most of my tenure here at the central office, so uh, we'll certainly miss you guys. You won't have my pleasant smile up there. <laughs> <laughs> Plus a few other things. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to change your number before Dwight starts calling you. <laughs> yeah. No, I told I told Barry to give him your phone number, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you, Dwight. All right. Here we go. Yes, sir. I'd like to just share a few things and kind of catch you up to speed uh, since we were get together last month. Obviously, tomorrow is our last day for the first semester, so that will be after tomorrow. That will be 72 days of instruction down, and that will leave uh, 91 for the second semester. Okay, uh, if you watched the press conference on Monday, the governor spoke and talked about uh, reopening of schools and gave some potential guidelines, and then talked about making some additional mandates or executive orders that hasn't came down yet but we think we know what those are going to be you remember that chart that we looked at before that was green yellow orange and red they made some modifications to that chart but in tuesday at the superintendent's webcast they said that that chart will still be just a recommendation so when you're in orange they'll recommend a hybrid schedule or remote and then when you're red, they will recommend a more extensive uh, hybrid schedule or remote. When asking questions of the commissioner, what do they mean by more extensive hybrid? A lot of those questions was make sure that your classes, that your students are able to social distance. Now for us, I don't think that's going to require much change because in the majority of all of our classes, we were able to do that. You know, when you have 10 kids or so, in a classroom, you're already able to spread them out. Uh, so, but there were a few classes, pockets potentially at the high school. The rooms maybe were a little overcrowded on a given day, A or B. Maybe there was 15 to 16 in the room. Uh, but I've already met with the principal there, and we've talked about other rooms they can go to on those given days so that they'll have more space. So that will be our version of the extensive hybrid. We will just make sure that we're able to socially distance inside the classrooms, but we won't have to bust our groups apart anymore. We'll still be able to stay on A and B, and kids will still be able to go to school at least twice a week. Uh, the other thing he said that you have to do and that we expect him to mandate is if someone wants to go virtual at this time, you know, we have those virtual options through Odysseyware, but if, let's say, if it's an advanced class, such as an AP class, they've been attending in person. This next semester, if, if they choose to be out of school for a, a period of time, then they will still be able to have that remote access in, just like we're doing now. They'll be able to watch from the computer but see our teacher teaching. Uh, that way they can still be a part of an AP class or an advanced class. So that'll be a modification that we'll be making as well. Uh, the Healthy at Schools document, we've been following that all along. That's where it talks about washing of hands, social distancing, mask wearing, things of that nature. That's what he's probably going to mandate and sign in as an executive order. And I think simply because some districts, as you know, there, there's at least one of our neighbor, neighboring districts, I won't mention their names, but they were never on a hybrid schedule. They were going, when they went to school, they went five days a week full force. So by signing this executive order, whether it be tomorrow or next week when he does that, for those districts that were going full force, when they're in red, this is basically going to tell them they're not going to be able to do that now. Because how can you social distance if you have every enrolled kid in your building? It doesn't work. Um, but again, for us, it won't be any major changes. It'll just be a few little minor tweaks here or there that we'll have to make. The next big question will be, when will that be? 
And, and if I had the crystal ball, or as Ginger Titchener says, if I had one of those magic eight balls, I could shake it up right now and give you my best guess. I think it would be premature for me to tell you tonight what we're going to do. Um, I hope that we can return to school January 4th. Now, I know the recommendation is out there that we wait till the 11th. And if you all tell me, whether it be tonight or individually later, that collectively we need to wait till the 11th, then obviously that's what we would do. Right now, what my plans are is we have announced a long time ago when we first went to remote that we hope to see you on January 4th. So I'm clinging on to that hope and I'm still wait, waiting for the 4th. And during Christmas break, if something happens and our numbers skyrocket again and if we have to back up and punt, then we'll make that announcement. But as of right now, as long as our numbers are manageable and they're back to the area they are now or less, then I don't see any reason why we couldn't go to school on the 4th. Talking with area superintendents today, a lot of people are up in the air. The ones that have already made a decision have already settled on going on the 11th. Um, there's a couple uh, that are considering the 4th, but like us, they're wanting to wait and see what happens in the next week or two before they try to announce any official plans. So that's kind of where we stand with that. Vaccines, you've probably heard a buzz about vaccines. Uh, I did uh, send out an email yesterday afternoon to all of our staff, and uh, I may have to eat crow if you all tell me to do something otherwise tonight. Uh, we were supposed to start working on rosters, so I sent that out to fulfill what the governor and the commissioner has asked us to do. And those rosters consist of their name, the school they're at, and they also had to put their age. And those are the rosters that we have to build and they have to be submitted by December 30th. Uh, the, the topic where I said I may have to eat crow is I went ahead and sent out, made an executive decision to not mandate the vaccine. Obviously, as a local board of education, you could choose to do that if you wanted to. Um, but, but, if, but if you did mandate it, you have to give options to uh, not meet that requirement, which would be disability or would also be a religious exemption. Um, so since you have to provide exemptions anyhow, I just thought why even try to say in, that it's mandated or required, let the individual make the choice. So we sent that out yesterday, and I think while ago when I looked, we already had around 122, 123 people respond yes. Because I said, if you don't want it, don't respond. Don't do anything. Mm -hmm. But if you do want it, please complete the Google survey, and it automatically comes to us in a spreadsheet. Okay. Uh, and, and the reason why we went ahead and sent it out, the, the state, the Department of Public Health, wanted to find out, they, they have to know by the end of the month, how many they need to put in for Ohio County. Mm -hmm as far as educators, that group. The educators are gonna be on a priority list, you know, other than uh, some older uh, elderly individuals that are like assisted living and then frontline healthcare workers. Educators group will be kind of in that third tier, but it'll take priority over the general public. So they will order whatever the number is that we put in for on the 30th. And that's how many they'll order for Ohio County. So if you don't, if you're an educator and you don't sign up, then that means you will not be in the priority wave. You will have to wait till it's available to the general public. But if you are on this roster, you will have access to it earlier than it becomes available to the general public. So that's kind of where we stand with the vaccine. Is that sent to all staff? Does that include all staff or just? Every person that staff? works for Ohio County Schools. Okay. That's janitors, um, certified. Everybody. Okay. Not just teachers, that's bus drivers, monitors. Now, not everybody has email. Right. And those that don't, the principals have been contacting them specifically. Uh, Daniel McCoy is very tech savvy. As you're aware, he created that Google form for us. And then he also created a, Q, a QR code. You've seen those, oh, the little. Wow. And so that's what we're that's using in transportation. We have that on the wall and you just take your smartphone over there to it with the camera on and it takes you to the survey and you answer the four questions and boom, it, it, you're done. It takes about 40 seconds. So uh, we've been doing that with transportation the last day or two when they come in. If they want to take it, we just take them to that picture, get their phone up. If for some reason they don't have a smartphone, 
we just go to the computer and Mr. Stouffer does it for them, puts their name in and, and gets them added to the list. So that's what's been going on with the vaccine and we do have to have that list submitted to the state by the 30th. Winter sports, just in case you're curious, they obviously started practicing um, on the 14th and games can officially start on January 4th. Uh, it is restrictive. Right now, the guidelines that have been sent down to us from the High School Athletic Association is that each participant can have four tickets. So each player will get four tickets to basically give to whoever their fans are going to be. And that's the only tickets that will be allowed. So there won't be any one else unless you have a connection and get a ticket from one of those players. You won't be watching any ball games at least the first half of January. If things improve, those guidelines might relax a little bit and we can start having you know, more like 10% or at the max maybe 15% or so of capacity. But initially, four tickets. In my regional superintendent's meeting today, some just to err on the side of caution. We're even going ahead initially saying only two tickets. That for visiting teams, they were only gonna let two people come in per player and they were debating at, what to do even at home tickets. So uh, just know that it's going to be very restrictive and you might hear some backlash from maybe some that love to go watch ball games. I know I have already, I have but, but I just said, listen, it is what it is. It's not about you and me watching the games. This is our call, Well, and it's not about us watching the games. It's about the kids getting a chance to play. Right. And if the kids need to play without any spectators, then I'm okay with that. Let the kids play, and we can all watch on YouTube if that's what it takes. Hey, Doc. Um, hey, you told me to call Karen. I did. I get. I get. I get. I get. No, he loves to talk to me. I give. I give Karen a bet. Yeah. I will also say this: even with the vaccines, just in case somebody asks you, it doesn't mean you're. Uh, now, no way you're totally immune from getting COVID. You could still be a carrier of COVID. So they still recommend, health department still recommends following the same protocols we use now. Even whether you have vaccine or not, you still have to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. If you've been exposed, you still have to quarantine. You know, all of those same things will apply because they could be a carrier, even though they may not get very sick. Uh, so we will still follow all of those health ed school guidelines that we've been following since uh, we first returned to action. Other than uh, this being our December meeting, certainly wish uh, everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year because uh, after we adjourn this evening, I know we won't see you again probably until January. But that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right, all right you've had time to look over your consent. And a motion and a second to approve the consent. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All right, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Carry. All right, you've had time to look over your personal report. A lot smaller it was last week. Last month? Yeah, it should be. <laughs> All right. Approve the CR1 audit report. All right, the CRI is our new auditing firm, and they have done just that. They have done their job and task, and we have with us tonight Mr. Lanny White. All right. And Lanny will be uh, reviewing that audit with you all. Good evening, Chairman, and board members. Just another nice see y'all And, uh, Pretty big report, and again, I'm not sure what you've been used to in the prior years. Uh, I, I spent a little more time this year, I know, with, with the management group and went to it, and uh, they seem to think it's kind of something they haven't had in the past. So tonight, I thought like this will do a little bit. I mean, maybe longer than normal, but not forever, <laughs> but it could be a big report. But kind of give you some highlights and uh, just some things that we try to give you insight to as we go through the audit process, and that way. I'm kind of using your report and the graphs kind of off and on, but first we'll start in the report itself. And if you can turn to page, uh, after page one, you can start in front. And 
And this is the actual report. I mean, this is what we provide to the district. I mean, we come in and give an opinion on the financial statements. And are they fairly stated or not fairly stated? And they were a sense uh, given the opinion we received. You'll see on the second page that they were fairly stated. Uh, the letter breaks out what responsibilities are yours and what's what's what I mean for the district goals and for it's our responsibility. Page two carries on over into the word opinion. And that's where we give the uh, what's kind of called a clean opinion, an unmodified report. So any user of these financial statements, you know, let's let them know that they're further stated and then they can rely upon these with no other exceptions. And then the school district is a governmental entity, so it therefore has to do reporting on government auditing standards, which is a little more comprehensive than normal uh, auditing standards. And other information also is required to be put in here, and we'll see uh, the other required information. Primarily, the MDNA, it's called Management Discussion Analysis. You'll see it here after this. That's something that Kathy does, and it's something that it's really good. It came in about like 10, 15 years ago. Time flies. But it's a piece of information that we can't as auditors say about a company or a government, but it gives a reader an understanding of your operations and kind of things of what happened. So it gives an insight kind of where you've been, where you are, and where you're going. So it's a good, it's a, it's a good read. I think you ought to go to read it. Uh, it's very informative from that standpoint. But we don't give an audit opinion. We look at it and make sure Kathy and, and, and Super Southern didn't get too creative and go too far from what the audit says. So, you know, we do make sure we give that assurance to it, but we don't really audit the numbers. So that is the report. So a good report for financial, financial goals. Uh, page four is the MDNA that I just described. And it runs all the way over to, to uh, really through page 16. I won't go through it, but that's what that part is. Uh, page 17 is the first statement you'll see in, 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 in the binder. And these financials are really broken out. They have two sets of financials in it. The first set is called the government wide. And what the government wide, the purpose of that is, most of you have a business or something, have a, have a company, you'll use it for the bank or whatever. It shows you like your balance sheet, your income statement. This tries to show everything for school on one full accrual method. The other stuff we'll see in the back, what's called fund accounting, or fund statements, is what Kathy does every day. You know, see all the time, it's about pots of money for different groups. But it's so disaggregated, you don't know in total what the district really looks like. And this came about, and part of the new standard came out in my day, about 10 years ago. There were some governments that failed on bond issues due to cause money was sliced and diced in many places. You couldn't tell the true picture of an entity. Well, let's pull them in together and kind of show you the health of your entity. And really, on a full accrual basis, on a full cash basis, we kind of tell you where you are. So, primarily here, it'll show you your assets as far as your cash, your current assets, your your uh, uh, campus at cost, what you have in it. Then we'll go through all your debts, and also you can read your net equity. So, the first part here you'll see assets. You'll see two columns. One says the governmental activities, and one says the business type activities. Primarily, school food is going to be the main thing in the business activity. That's a primary. Uh, activity in there and then the government activities are going to be everything else my standpoint. So kind of you know now you see the two columns. So if you slide out through your uh, assets, you'll see come on after the total of the total assets, you are at 57.6 million in the current year and you're about 57.9 last year. So about $200,000 change. Not a lot of change net. Now there was some bigger change in composition. But your, your current assets, which is like your investments, your cash, things that you can spend, did increase about $2 million. But capital assets like your, your campus and things like that did drop about two uh, about a million eight. And the reason it dropped because primarily it also charged depreciation in here too. Like you use more depreciation, two million dollars was charged on that to write it down. So it's a non-cash, but it writes it down. So that's kind of the change on the asset side. Uh, as far as the liabilities go, you'll see things called deferred inflows and outflows. These things are totally related to the pension for the state and then also for health health insurance. It's, it's called. Other polls of public benefit, OPEP. This is mm -hmm. this is a slide for And these are all given by the actuary. Uh, liabilities, you can see here this is liabilities, again, of the district. Total liabilities of 40 million six versus 40 million, 42 million uh, point nine in the prior year. About almost $2 million drop in liabilities in, in the prior year to current year. With most of that coming from the payment of debt. Debt was paid down about 1.3 million. And then the uh, 
it's kind of funny, the, the, the pension and the, and the old payout liability, they kind of offset. One went up 1.6 and one went down by 1.5. So they kind of net overall <laughs> offset, but they did go up some one, one down on the other. So that kind of tells the net changes on here. And I can also show like a complex absence, which is your sick leave. It's an estimate there of what you pay up for sick leave for all your employees that are five years and greater of employment. And also it shows again any kind of accrued interest and also also for the pension items. We'll see the pension items and the OK items are the big things I was in here in question of how it's called the negative impact on most governmental entities. And the district's not excluded from that. So if you go to page 18, one over, there's the inflows also for the pensions. Now the deposition, that's your equity. That's your assets minus liabilities. And you can see on the net position for the government funds, you got a seventeen and a half million dollars, and likewise, you've got a total of about seventeen still carried across. And your actual increase was about a million fifty-one thousand the current year, so you have a good increase still with that. What you want to watch for this is what this one does here. Anytime you see a negative situation in that equity, that's what the problem hits. So this is this is the kind of the test you look at to see am I okay or not okay? I'm kind of scoring your financials. And so you still you're showing us a deficit down there of 9.6 million. Well, that kind of looks bad too, because you're, you're, you're negative and it forces your operating activity. Well, what's causing that is the pension and the OPEP piece. So a lot of times, what I suggest to you, if you add that stuff that's given to you from from a sense from an actuary, you're not going to pay that back right now. If you did every every government in the United States would look good world. Yeah. Because there's not enough money here, so. In reality, if you were to add that back, really then how, how do you look? And you really go to a surplus about 15.7, that number. So really, you know, you're okay once you kind of back it out, kind of see. So it kind of distorts a little bit that number, but as there's a part of it, it kind of goes to put it in here, but it kind of gives you a true picture of kind of really do how you stand. Because if we had the pension back and you were negative still, I would have some discussion with you. Because there's something else going on you might want to just look at because you still are carrying an overall deficit for operations. But you're not when you have that back. So, still a good report for you. So please feel free to go through stuff, ask questions. If you have some, I'm going to try to fill them go through them. The next segment is page 19. This is on the operating segment. And again, on the current year, to the far left is the expenses it takes to run the district, different areas. Now, on the, on the going across the board to the right, shows you the money, like grant money, the things that are specific to earmarked for those costs, and how it offsets that cost. And of course, that doesn't call, cover all the costs, but it covers part of it. And then your tax money and things will end up covering the rest of it. We'll see on the next page. So you can see here, total revenues for the year about 47.8, I mean 48.6 this year, 47.3 last year, about 1.3 million increase in revenues. And last year, you had expenses about 45.6, this year about 47.6, about 2 million increased expenses, but a net of $7,000. My standpoint as a, 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 a decline. So, we'll go on with the next page, on page 20, you'll see the totals here. You'll see the debt change position. That, that was a, that number I told you earlier about the increase, $949,000. $940,000 the debt change at the bottom there, and hundred three on the business type. So, you still have a positive change of revenue minus expenses on the overall accrual of the method. So, again, we do a total right now of uh, nine districts across the state. And so, you know, a lot of them do not show positive, I'll tell you right now, from my standpoint. So this district, you'll see them more like I got some comments on the general fund, it, it is very healthy in that area. So you've got a good report from my standpoint, and it's a good financial number that's coming through. Even though it did drop about $900,000 in the prior year, it's still a good number of a pop of about almost a million dollars. Any questions on that? Okay, so we're going to jump in over on page 21. These are things you're used to seeing more often. This statement is going to jump once a year prior and pretty much in the audit. That's all you ever see. It. This, the statement starting now is called the fund statements, and you see it by, by, by funds. And you'll see the general fund, the special revenue fund, which is kind of called the, for the grants, they call fund two. And those are the, the two major programs uh, for, for, for this year of the district. Then all the others kind of lumped into one total there and the other. As far as the asset goes for the general fund, we have 15.3 for the current year. Last year, at about 13.8, about 1.4 million increase in total assets for the general fund. With 1.3 of that being cash. So, very strong 
increase in, in your liquid asset, having cash increase that much. Uh, plus revenue funds, pre comparable at 395 this year, 252 last year, K. And then on the total other, it was 638 this year, K, versus a million 20 last year. You'll see the other funds dropped down some this year because the construction fund has the money to cover from last year from bond proceeds that were spent out this year in 2020. So we kind of dropped out and spent money out. So overall, a very good increase on the asset side. On the next page, we'll see on page 22 the uh, liabilities and the equity on the fund balance. You can see our liabilities, not, not a huge change. It was a 237. Or 273 this year, I'm sorry, and 531 last year, okay? About $200,000 change. Not, a, again, a big number on the liabilities number. Uh, the fund balances, though, were very positive again this year. Uh, you'll see down there, so the fund balance for the general fund, $15,018,288. Last year, about $13,300 million. So you got about a million seven increase in the current year in your, in your general fund. So. And you see the, the types of the balances and the fund balance. And the non expendable primarily for inventory, but you can't spend it, it's in, it's in the SRA inventory. Restricted primarily the tech center. And the committed really is coming through from construction, sick leave, which y'all done as a board, which you committed, consents on the financial. Assigned monies are really monies that's been kind of earmarked, navigated for open POs, uh, site uh, based carryovers, uh, DAF funds in the future. The none is that the money is just as clear for the district to use on any kind of good obligations. So again, a good number from that standpoint. Uh, most of the other funds, again, the so other funds are comparable. 162 this year, 141 last year, okay. And likewise, we had a small, but I did have a drop in the, in the other amount of construction funds that turned out. Last year it was $900,000, this year $600,000. So that's pretty much the change in the equity. Page 23. This is just a sheet that shows the reconciliation. Like we had the first segments of the government wide to the funds. It just kind of does the equity to and from. It kind of shows you where you had fixed assets back in, you had debt back in. It just kind of does the record reconciliation, how it gets it from one equity to the other equity. Page 24. This is the uh, revenue expense statements. You can see on the general fund, total revenues, 36,159,363 in the current year. Last year was 36,471,000. So really about a $312,000 drop in revenue from, from, from the prior year to current year. Uh, special revenue funds, really, I like about only about a $1,000 difference from the two years. So not much change there. And governmental funds, about a $200,000 drop also from there. Expenditure wise, uh, some of the larger changes on the general fund probably came through the city transportation. Last year it was at 3.8, this year 3.3, so it's about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars less buckets, I think, for our in the current year than the prior year. Yeah. If you look over on page 25, it carries expenses to show all that changes. Uh, you'll see total expenses, 34 million, 5.5 almost it rounded up to 34.5 last year. Only about forty two thousand dollars net change expenses. So really almost break even for any kind of difference in the two years. Now, this is the key number here, which I might always focus on because it really shows how the general fund is supported. If your salaries are too much out of line or other costs out of line versus your revenue, which can harm you physically. But you all are not in that position for sure. It shows here. But the excess efficiency of revenues or expenditures. You're showing in the current year about a $1.7 million, $1 million increase on that number. Last year it was $1.9, about $200,000 difference. But that's a very healthy change of positive where you had revenues in, in excess of expenses that were about 1.7 million approximately. I mean, that's, that, that's very strong. I don't see that very often from my standpoint. Now, I know you all got things planned. We'll go through a minute of us to do some of this money on down the road, but we'll touch on, the, on another kind of summary here in a minute at the end of this report, but I want to touch with you, but that's, again, a very strong number. Uh, other financing sources. Net thirty-two thousand dollars. Last year you had to, you paid more out. You paid about a million two out for some building projects. This year you didn't have to pay that out. So that was able to go back down to the fund balance. So this year your net change one million seven. The net change versus one point three last year about three hundred thousand dollars or four thousand dollars change improved this year from prior year. Now something I would like to go through and, and explain is kind of you know 
Districts, you always want to carry anywhere from one month to at least three months of operating expenses. Because that can kind of tell you either you're spending too much, too less, and plus it's going to make you think twice of how you're, what you're carrying money in, but you might need to plan for it and put it in the commitment side, what you've done. And so, like right now, if you look at your fund balance, and then the district is going to spend about $34.5 million this year, and you back out the, uh, all the half payments. These numbers also include things that are paid by the state on your behalf, which is about $9.5 million. So truly your expenses were, were, were about uh, $25,000, I mean $25 million versus $34 million. So when you divide the, the $25 million into the 12 months, it's about $2,077,000 a month of what you spend on average cost the district to run their operations. So when you divide that into your fund balance, which you have excess of, for your unassigned balance, it's about six months coverage. And then for the unassigned, Plus the committed, because the committed, you could have to come back in and, and unwind that to use the operation. Mm -hmm. so if somebody needed it, gives you about seven months coverage total. Mm -hmm. But most time, you know, anything over three months, you're seeing, you know, you're probably getting some excess. So, you know, I was talking to someone earlier with, with the management group is, you know, I know you're going through building stuff. You might want to somehow go in and commit some more funds for construction or something if you're doing it. So your money is going to be used. My understanding. So put it in there, and you may play out this year. See how it comes out by the end of the year. What would you what you spend out by the end of this year? But if you still have that access, I mean, kick out this up there too. You may not come through and try to commit some more for construction. It gets you back really what you plan on using because it looks like you got more in there than you need, but really you don't maybe because you all have plans to use those funds. So it tries to give a better reputation when you get these things go to Frankfurt and they start seeing your numbers and start saying, well. You know, you, you're, you're hoarding money, or you're, you're, but you're not. You just got money you haven't put in here in different pods to show what you're going to use it for. And as you go through a tax increase, if you need something, it helps support this reason of why things are being used versus having excess funds. Because you're a very sound district. You're, you're very, very healthy from that standpoint. Any questions on that? It's just nice to hear. Thank you. Well, that, 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 I mean, but that's, that's where it, it tries to be transparent. The, right. The, the, you're, you're actually you're, you're counting and you're a member and you're the uh, taxpayers and things you ask questions. So it just helps give support for transparency. Now, if we look at these graphs, they kind of give a little quick summary of some things I would say. And normally we do a five year presentation, of course, we have been out long and some things are grouping differently from different authors, so it's kind of comparable to the idea of what I put over the two years. This first year shows the general fund fund balance. You can see you had a good year. You, know, you increased again by about 1.7 1, 1. million. So a good, good friend. Any positive stair stepping is going to be good. So, uh, pictures always help me a little bit understand things. Now, you can see your breakdown of your revenue is really consistent. Your money from the general fund, from the local side, and state fund, and federal, pretty much spot on. So, no real big swings of who carries you and what loads. It's pretty distribution, distribution of it's pretty equal between both years. The next graph kind of shows where the money you look to spend on the general fund. And actually, which is good, you actually spent 2% more this year on, on, on instruction which is what you're here for for, for, for for the children of the district. So actually more money went to instruction than the prior year. Administration dropped about a percent. Plant was pretty even. And student transportation said it dropped some. So some of those activities needed in the prior year did not carry over into 2020. So it kind of gives you a little history there on the uh, expenses comparability. Then on the net change, you can see here again, 1.7 this year versus 1.3 last year, a good increase in the positive stair step. Then on the last graph, as we just went through, it shows you the actual fund balances and the uses of those. Restricted was pretty much comparable, net in total. Commitment was to assign. Actually went up a little bit more from my standpoint. And then not spend the inventory was not really too much difference. And had a positive increase in the unsigned, which can be used going forward. So a good report from my standpoint. Any questions on the general fund before we move on? I was the business type activity for the school. We go to page 627. This is on the school food primarily. <coughs> There's one other non major enterprise fund total. Uh, school food is here on the assets this year. It actually went up from 2.3 to 1.9 last year, about a $4,000 increase. Most of that's going to be in cash. Uh, liabilities primarily went up because of the, of the pension number. About $300,000 increase in pension. The net position, the equity, 
147,000 or 140,000 rounded up, of course, 97 last year, about 50,000 on the increase. It was good, it was a good increase. So we go over to the next page is the operating segment. You see the operating revenues, 115,000 this year versus 138 last year. Of course, COVID hit around you know, March, whatever. School got out, so lunchroom sales are gone. That's that point, so you don't have a full whole year versus nine months before you missed that part. So likewise, you see the operating expenses. Uh, actually, had a, had a good trend this year. You uh, had about three million ones as operating expenses last year. You had about three million four. Operating expenses dropped about three hundred thousand dollars in the current year, and that was primarily in wages and salaries. So again, a good drop. Revenue was pretty flat on that part, but expenses really did drop in the current year. So it helped us see the operating loss. It shows there two million nine eighty. And versus three million four eleven last year. Now, as we know, most of the money has come through federal reimbursement on the program, so it gets subsidized. So you can see three million two in there for the total non-operating revenues, and pretty much the same three million two last year. About twenty four thousand change total of overall on the non-operating numbers. But the key difference is it says the net position. Well, also I'll point out the transfers. It's still good because the food service is still covering money, cover money for their admin costs and direct costs to come back over the general fund. So you're able still to carry money over to support the general fund for the cost that's incurred for the school food program. So the net position in the current year showed a net change positive of $97,000. Last year it showed a loss of one fifty seven. So about a $250,000 swing in the positive direction current year for school food. So again, a good move. Uh, operation for the school food of the year. Now, lunch activity for 2020 had about 5,507,000 meals for lunch versus uh, 539 the prior year, about 32% 32,000 uh, drop in meals for the uh, lunch breakfast, 398k versus 433 in the prior year, about 35,000 35, meals drop for breakfast. This year, you all weren't quite that. Now, some, some districts this year got really, really aggressive in the school food. You all weren't quite as aggressive from that standpoint. Uh, came out good financially, and your, and your school food is very healthy. But some, some districts this year really got really aggressive in that and made school food really did spike a lot. Because you got, your reimbursement changed a lot to summer feeding, because a lot of that changed now with how they were being done, which the school is no longer in session. And a lot of people packed meals and buses and gave kids five meals, five breakfasts everywhere, and it went to a lot of people. And the numbers really did skyrocket across a lot of schools we saw. You're all, I think, started that way, but then it kind of leveled off from that standpoint. So, still made money uh, from that standpoint. So, you'll see for, for the current year, you ended up having a fund balance of about, uh, well, can't really use some fund balance in here because of the pensions. If you go back to your current assets, you could get cash, and then you have in cents your total expenses. Total expenses were about 2.5 million. If you do over 12 months, it's about $200,000 a month. Right now, you've got about 10 months coverage of your operating expenses, which most time KDE will come through. Anything over three months, they're going to make you start spending money. So again, you're very healthy in that area, and you probably got stuff from KDE. At least I'll put some this that you're going to spend some money down to get some things in there. So again. Very good problem to have, uh, from my standpoint, but uh, very, very well funded. Any questions on that thing? If not, then on page 31 is the fiduciary funds, but it really gets into the uh, school activity funds and, and the trust. And you can see on the uh, page 31, the activity funds have about $120,000 in assets in the current year. About 1.2 last year. And the trust had about 4.8 million this year and about 4.7 in the prior years. So not a lot of change. And forward on page 32, the operations. Income was comparable, 345,000 this year, 348 last year. And the net change was 139 this year and 100 last year. So really just almost spot on for two years. That's the basic second. Now page 33. Through page 81 are all the notes. 
We will not go through the notes, but the notes, what they are, the notes go through and give you a lot of detail of what these front segments were, these numbers were. Now, unfortunately, about a third of these notes are dealing with pension and OPEP. And if you have any kind of somnia issues, I'm fine. <laughs> And the other one very effectively, Uh Page 82 is the uh, budget. Again, the budget is here. Uh, positive trends on the budget, you were over. You get on revenues, of course, the expenses were since sense, likewise, uh, short of overall total. So, again, a positive variance there, too. So, it kind of go back to the general fund, you end up again with the $1.7 million surplus. So, again, the budget actually was good. Uh, we're going over to page 86. We go to the pension. Well, this, this is probably to save you time reading the remote. These two graphs here, these tables, are probably some of the best information you see. This gives you a, a, kind of an idea of where the pension numbers are. You know, you're in two planes. You're in what's called the KTRA for teachers and the CERT for the classified folks. And this one is for the teachers. Of course, the teachers, the state is in pays it for your other behalf. So you have a liability, the Commonwealth of Kentucky has a liability. But it shows here, you know, there's no one in the top zero percentage of yours. But you can see the total going across here. And it's really, this shows you how you can really play with the numbers. And it's a really example here. You can see in 2015, you, your, your portion of the liability was $103 million, almost $104 million. Now if you slide over to 2020, it's about $66 million. So, you know, a huge drop. And what happened is, in, in, in the prior year, they dropped a discount rate, what's called, for how they value them, them on, on the money. It was at a 4.5 of prior years. They bumped it up at three, the seven and three and a half in the other years. So a 3% swing in that discount rate changed all that number. So that's how you can really play with the number from a national standpoint to show of how that level can change. So when you see it, what's happened is because of the discount rate change. Then you can see other aspects of your uh, totals for your payroll, your payroll. I will point out, I mean, it looks kind of, looks kind of odd, that's how it was in 2015. You'll see the 11 million five or 16. The prior presentations that you were getting didn't have the actual numbers here correctly. Catherine did, we tried to run some numbers to fix that number. That was the best number. She wasn't here, we weren't here. So the best number we could come up with to put in there for that standpoint. Because what happens is the actuaries are always a year behind. Like this number is really for 19, and you've got to have an 18 number. And so, you back here is really 15, it's really 14. So we didn't have they, the, the number wasn't in the prior audits. So we had to go out through and try to find that number. But you see after that, most of the changes in the payroll are pretty consistent. So that's kind of the impact on the case you are in. On page 88 is, is the servers, and you do pay the servers. You can see the percentages at the top. That's your percentage of, of, of the liability when it breaks it out. You can see how it's changed, though, and primarily of just increased funding, I mean, lack of funding from 7.5 million to 15. So it's doubled. And there really hasn't been a lot of change in it. Some changes in this kind of rate, a lot of it's just because of liability issues. And you can see your, your, your payroll, too, from that standpoint. And you can see also the big change here at the very bottom. In 15, your rate for pension was 12 and 3 quarters. Or, or, you know, in 20, it was 19.3. Mm -hmm. So, again, that's a number of as you know, been escalating and probably will not go down. It will go upfield. Mm -hmm. That has the pension, and then to get over to page nine, uh, 91, that starts the part with the KTRS piece. Again, on the health insurance, it's on the OPED now. You can see that. Pension had like two years before it started, before the OPEB. OPEB only about three years. You can see the numbers there. It's pretty comparable. Going through. This is on the teachers again, which you do have a small piece of the liability. And on page 92, it goes through also for the teachers, which you have no percentage for the lot life piece. On page 93 is the, is the classified. You do have all there. And you can see there, this is what's really been pretty, pretty consistent. You can see 4.4, 4.5, 19, and 3.6. So it's actually performed better. And it's, I have improved. You can see by, by that, you can tell by the rate. 
You were 4.7 or 4.76. So, again, not a lot of change over the three years for the actual health insurance. Page 95. This is the <coughs> also the discharge to show like in the front, we saw the other column, the one-week total. This breaks that down. It shows what funds make up the front totals. So you can tell about fund, what what's going to go through there from that standpoint. Okay. And the same thing for the uh, actual business, which is that some of the school age care, the fourth proposal and the high school on total. On page 101 shows your, your school activity funds by school. And by state law, required to show a detail for the high school. And on page 102, it starts the detail for the high school. See, by, by, by. Page 104 is called the Schedule of Federal Awards. It's actually your federal money for the whole year. And on page 105, you see you have $5,627,000. Last year was five million six hundred twenty dollars. That's one twenty thousand dollars. So about seven thousand dollars increase. So pretty comparable in two years. Now that should change. I think coming up this next year with the tariff coming in and stuff, that should go up some for twenty million. Then on page one hundred eight, this is the second letter in here. This is just what's called government audit standards. It's on controls and on compliance of all the regulations. Uh, as far as controls go, you have what's called a material weakness and a significant deficiency. And the material weakness is the weakness is so weak that it would not detect a material mistake going through. These financials could go out, mature mistake it, and nothing would catch it. And the other would be significant deficiency is where it's heightened enough, it's not at that level, but it's enough we think it should come to your attention. We did not have any of those to report this year from a control standpoint. So again, that's a positive report from my standpoint. Likewise, for laws and regulations that are direct material to filing financial statements, there are no compliance issues noted in that procedure. So again, two good reports there for compliance and for control. Second letter, letter from the page 110 is on the federal programs. Same thing for, for controls and also for compliance. And we actually give an opinion. Uh, the opinion on one major program, what it was titled one. And again, to receive what's called a modified opinion, it was put as a clean audit on Title One program. No control issues for the control or no compliance issues. So again, two good reports there. And on page 113, this kind of gives, gives you a summary. But I just mentioned here of the, the findings of none of them was reported on those two kind of reports for the financials and the federal programs. And 114 turns over to the Title One and again that was reported. Uh, page 115 does come up what's called a management letter. These are things that more for checks and balances, not, not, not heightened as much as, as control risk as in the first two that I mentioned to you. And we did have, have some comments here. And normally a lot of things driven in schools, it comes from what's called the red book. Policy procedures done at the school level for activity funds. And we did have some comments in here on those areas. And so, uh, gone through, identified by school with what they were, <coughs> nothing, I mean, are alarming, but there's some things in there that does need to be taken care of. You know, some things were canceled, you know, checks were canceled, signatures, some things were not noted. So, deposits, so there's some things that do need to take care of. But what, like, no fraud and that nature found, but just some things need to be addressed. And they're noted for as a response goes on page uh, 118 starts the response by management. How they plan to address those comments that we have brought forward. That kind of sums up the audit. Now, this last part, as you see on page 121, it's called the fraud communication. This, this document is really just required to give it to anybody who's government uh, on the audit process. You don't have like, an audit committee for the board action capacity. So I'm going to go through this. Kind of, a lot of this is kind of boilerplate, but it's stuff that we're kind of required to go over with you. On page 123, and I'll go through this pretty quickly. Again, we were independent coming through the process of the audit. Uh, page 124. Didn't have any change, any kind of county policy <coughs> this year for the district. Page 125, we did not have any disagreements with the management before the audit to go. We were very professional and cordial with getting us information. Page 126, uh, we didn't have to consult any outside, uh, any other accountants or professionals. Management did sign a representation letter. They reviewed these financials and they take responsibility for them. 
I can read the record of the disability. Did not know any, any material fraud from our uh, actual uh, audit processes. On page 128, the biggest numbers in here with are estimated is your copyright access, your sick leave, and then the pension and the OPEP liability are estimated by actuarial studies. And likewise, the investments are also estimated at fair values to make sure. Uh, we also have like an independent, actually the value of your portfolio. And it was within the range which we could pass on and showing the values were accurate. Uh, page 130 to show that the adjustment was made. We only have one adjustment really. And it's something that was probably done in the prior year going on a loan from the water district here. Was so what this had to say for you all, which I like to always, I guess people work harder in the district too, it, it, it's give them a compliment is with only one adjustment, that means every month you get information and you make decisions, it's accurate. <coughs> so that's the key thing is that you make decisions on good numbers so you know what your impact is. So again, it's a good reflection upon the management of the district. Uh, Some of the was we passed on, we made 131, we were deemed not material, and those, was, again, nothing was significant, so we passed on it. And that's our testing. And then the last letter there is just the letter for management that they can send us signed. It's just that took in about the facts. That might be a bit longer than you used to seeing it. I hope it wasn't too boring. I always remember those exciting topic. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Thank you very much for for this. This was Thank you. pretty informative, more informative than what I've seen before. Very much so. Well, again, if y'all have questions, I'll feel free to ask. <coughs> my standpoint, and most times questions will get one more than that's from schools or regular questions sometimes. So I have a question things pop up, so. But the thing else, you guys got a very good team here, so very qualified, so I'm sure everyone will be fine tonight. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate it. All right, we need a motion to approve the law. Yes, sir. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Mr. Kerr. Ms. Kat Kerr. Good job, Kathy. All right, Chris, this is the report for the month of November. We started the month with the beginning uh, general ledger balance of fifteen million six seventy two three fifty seven ninety five. Total revenues six million five hundred and sixty seven thousand six thirty four nineteen. Expenditures two million nine hundred nineteen thousand five thirty six ninety two brings us to an end of month general ledger balance of nineteen million three twenty four fifty five twenty two. Our Barrett investment had a market value of just under two point three million and a payout value that was approximately two point two million. The beginning bank balance was sixteen million four thousand four sixty two ninety four. Our deposits and other credits, $6,057,296.48. The checks and other debits, $2,272,263.61. Less our outstanding checks brings us to a reconciled balance there again of $19,324,55.22. And that's up about $2.7 million from the prior year at this point. And I will say that at this point in the year, uh, of course, this has been an unusual year in more ways than one. Uh, but as we, you know, kind of approach the the midpoint in the fiscal year, as I looked back, um, you know, there are um, obviously less expenses just in general each month that I've looked at, and that kind of has accumulated uh, as we've gone through the year. So we're we're tracking this year. Um, better um, in revenue's sake, about just about $94,000, just year over year, just looking at where we were at um, this point last year. Our payroll expenses were actually about 575000 less. And you know, there's certain segments while, while we've continued to work our regular schedules and everything, 
there are some pockets of payroll that we have not had to incur. So that, again, kind of snowballs as we go through this fiscal year. And, um, you know, at least until things change materially uh, from just our activity level, then I would expect that to continue. So that bodes well for us financially, um, but, you know, I'd much rather have incurred the expense and have us back to normal, but, um, but those things will work to our advantage from a financial perspective. And then our expenses that are non-payroll related, we're running about 50000 less than we were last year. So there again, a good, a good change looking at that. So on a, on a cumulative basis, when we look at a, a net impact, uh, we're about 700000 better than we were last year. So um, are there any questions about the, the report there? Nope. Uh, one thing, if I might mention, um, we did have a bond sale on the night, and our results were very good. I'm not sure if, if uh, Seth had passed along any detail information about that, but I'll just mention the um, the rate that we received was 1.39, which is I uh, know you all uh, met Kelly when she was here uh, the last board meeting. Mm -hmm and with Baird, and she had indicated to me that that was the best, the, the lowest rate for a K-12 sale that she has seen, a 20-year bond sale. So uh, even late in the summer, she said uh, she had, they were about 1.9%. And I think Warren and Bowling Green had had bond sales recently, and theirs were uh, about two or maybe even over two, I believe she said. So, uh, and I think they even have a, um, uh, bond rating that's better than the states. So even with that, um, they still fell in the market in a pocket that was more <coughs> expensive than what we did. So um, there again, as Kelly had indicated, I think as meeting when we did, having that special meeting, and we just really hit a sweet spot in the year. Um, so we had some very cheap money <laughs> that we have Good. now to utilize to, uh, to use toward these two projects. So uh, hopefully that will bode well with the plans that we have for uh, the other project at uh, ATC. So um, I just wanted to pass along that really good news. So our, it makes our, our dollars go farther, and um, so we're very well pleased to, to hear how that turned out. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. And the only four is it. Motion to approve. I'll make that motion. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Carried. All right. Approved board member back. We discussed this last month i think in my comments i went through that process but i have since discovered that we have to act, actually have an official action item declaring declaring that we have a vacant board member position before we can start the advertisement process and as you recall uh, once you approve this tonight we will then be able to uh, have this form letter that i already have filled out i have to send it to four different entities and then starting next week, we can run the ad in the paper for two weeks. And then uh, starting sometime after the very first of the year, you can start looking at any of the applications that have been turned in. And, and in theory, potentially have uh, someone in that Fordsville seat, possibly even here at the January meeting, if you choose to move that quick. But we will, uh, once you approve this tonight, we will notify everyone tomorrow. I'll send these letters out, and then next week in the paper, we will start the ad, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Then we'll decide on uh, if we all want to look at applications or how we want to, how we want to do it. Yes, the ad will tell them to uh, come in and pick up an application, or okay. we'll also make it available online. And once we get the applications, I will uh, email those to you all. To review okay. and then at some point in time um, the four board members in January will need to look and review those whether it's a special called meeting or whatever you choose
to make a decision. You can even interview any applicants that there are. It's up to you all. You can do it by just looking at the applications, but you can also do an interview process. Who knows? You may have four people apply. You may have one. I mean, who knows? We'll just have to advertise and see what happens. And uh, once we get those applicants, I'll email you their applications and we'll go from there. Okay, sounds good. All right, yeah. I'll make, I'll make a motion. I'll second. All right, approved CD phase BG3. All right, it seems like Groundhog's Day on some of these things, but uh, uh, it's just the hoops you have to jump through in submitting everything. We, we've looked at a BG before, but this is the construction documents and uh, I'll just turn it over to uh, either one of the gentlemen from RVS if they need to walk us through uh, item four and then also when we get to item five. The, uh, the BG3, like Seth said, it's, it's, a, it's a repeat. Uh, at design development, we do a BG2 and a BG3 approval. It's obviously it's a KDE uh, form and it's a step that they uh, have the board to approve at each phase during the design process. Now. The notice up top where it says project phase, you have design development box to check, and you have the construction document box. So I believe last month when we got design development, we had the design development box checked. And it's, you know, what happens, there's, there's no different from the one we had at design development, which is good, but, but sometimes as plans evolve and engineers are uh, doing their design work or, you know, as architects, uh, if things evolve, scope may change or, uh, increases may be found in, in the design that wasn't uh, accounted for in previous BG forms that was completed. This gives you the opportunity to adjust those numbers before bid day. Um, and then once the bids are taken, we'll have another BG1 that that's going to be revised to reflect the actual cost of construction. Because up to this point, it's all just estimated. So, it's a form that's got to be submitted with our construction documents to KDE. Like I'm sure to say, it's just a, it's another um, hook to jump to. But I don't think there was any changes from from the last one to, to this one. So there wasn't same easy. same figures. So like you said, we've already done the design development. Now this is just another phase in this process. Now the construction documents. It'd be my recommendation that you approve this uh, BG3. I'll second. Right. All the paper. All right. Now to approve the construction documents again. <laughs> so the construction documents, you know, last month was the design development. When we get the design development drawings, uh, that's the first time that we actually have uh, our this, our systems designed from our engineers. Uh, first was schematics, and that's just site plan and floor plan. Then design development. That's when we get our engineers involved. They start designing anything from site civil, uh, structural design, and uh, mechanical plumbing. Uh, so that was uh, in, in the design development. The construction document phase is where we have these pro these, these plans uh, ready to go to the contractors. But before we do that, we have to get it all approved through Frankfurt to KDE. Uh, but it's the final uh, it's the final phase that the board has to approve drawings before we can take our bids. And it's, 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 it's just a more elaborate set of drawings. Specifications are done at that point. Uh, the, the, the drawing set gets much thicker uh, each, each, each step uh, because it's just more, more work's been done. Uh, Jeremiah's put a lot of work uh, into this project and uh, has, the, has, it, has it ready to submit to KDE, which is a, it's a big step. And now it's a now we're on their clock to get everything reviewed. <coughs> I'll make the motion to approve. All right, we have a motion. I'll yes. second. We have a second. All in favor? Okay. I have one question for you. Maybe. On the, will they do this here in the summer where there is no school on the changing all the, because they said they've got to change all the electrical coming in and the plumbing and the gas. Well, we will we'll do the we'll do the routing, you know, uh, while school is in session. Um, 
those and then we'll have to tie in um, probably during the summer. Yeah, we, we the, the plan now is so our main utility is running that front lawn, right? And and the, what we have is phase one of the project will be to construct a new mechanical room just off the corner of the uh, machine tool shop. And this it will kind of be a standalone building. Um, where we're going to house our heat pumps and, and connections and fire pumps and sprinklers and things. We're going to intercept all those utilities into this new building and we'll, we'll look to have that completed um, early to mid-summer. That way then, by school coming back, we can have things up on the new system because as soon as kids are out of the building, then they can come in and kind of rip everything down and put things back in and we'll have things switched over and then at some point in the summer, then we'll begin constructing the new addition. Um, out of the front there of the new classrooms, the new admin, and, and meanwhile, we'll, in phases and as weather permits and um, as scheduling permits, we'll be re-roofing the entire portion of, of work and we'll kind of draw our way up towards the addition and about the time we're ready to put that roof on, then we'll connect the two and, and then we'll, uh, at that point, you know, everything will be operating on the new, uh, mechanical and electrical systems and fire protection, all those things. So. It'll be phased in enough where it won't cause any disruptions to the school over there. They it's won't going have to be any scheduling and phasing you know, yeah. projects. It's, it's got some, some difficulties, but we feel if, if things work the way we've got on the plan, um, you know, work, can, work can start in you know, spring and, and, and summer to get those to get those utilities routed and clear up that space so that we can start our construction. All right. Thank you. All right. I approve the one time something. Uh, yes, sir. It'd be my recommendation. Uh, this is something that we've done uh, in previous years that we would approve a one-time supplemental pay increase for both certified and classified employees. All right, I need a motion. I have a motion. <laughs> we have a motion. One second. <laughs> and a second. Call on Mr. Garrett. We have reason for a closed session. Uh, yes, sir, we do, personnel. All right. All right, I need a motion to go in closed session for KRS 61.8. Make that motion. All right, we have a motion. Second. All right, we have a second. All in favor? Motion carries. We are now in closed session. Thank you.